All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ronald DeRivio. I am a software engineer. I'm currently working at Adobe. I don't, I'm not on social media because it makes me anxious. So if you'd like to connect, please come say hi. I'd love to meet you. I promise I'll try to speak in really, really short sentences for you. During my day job, I found over the years that I really enjoy fixing bugs, kind of like those wooden puzzles that you fiddle around with in your hand until you figure them out, and you feel really good about yourself, and kind of smug because you figured it out before your, uh, your friend. But they're also a guilty pleasure. When you're fixing bugs, you're not always adding value to your business. And 100% of the time, fixing these bugs is keeping you from doing the work you really want to be working on, so exciting projects. Um, so like Ernest, uh, I'm sorry, you're Ernest. Um, like Luke uh, Steeringer was talking about in his, in his talk yesterday about um, enacting standards, the mythical man month is real. According to Brooks, 50% of the time we spend on project is dedicated to testing and fixing bugs. I thought this number was too large, so I looked at the research and I was surprised to find that Four decades after this um, book was published, there's a lot of research, recent research, as recent as this year, that still supports Brooks' claims. So that means 50% of the time you spend at work is spent fixing bugs you wrote. That's horrible. So I asked myself, how can we avoid or mitigate the risk of introducing these bugs in the first place? And it turns out there's a lot of people that have strong, passionate ideas about this subject. There's one camp that says, bugs are a fact of life. Accept them, iterate, write your tests, refine your product, carry on. And I'm not opposed to testing, I'm not opposed to iterating, I think these practices are fine, but they're not addressing the main question. How do I keep bugs from getting into my system? So on another, in another camp, we have Extra Dextra, and I think he correctly stated um, when he said that testing systems or um, testing your programs will show bugs in your system, but it won't show the absence of them. So there's always potential for more bugs even after you've run your tests and they're successful. And he was a big proponent of discipline of thought. So to tackle this problem, he thought effective programmers or efficient programmers didn't waste their time debugging their code. They spent time systematically and methodically avoiding introducing them in the first place. Now, that's a pretty bold statement, and let's put a pin in that, and let's take a moment to address the duck in the room. This is Leslie. He sits on my desk. He helps me debug programs. He, he helps me when I have a problem I can't solve, so I hit him up and I say, hey Leslie, I'm having this problem. I explain what the problem is in much, as much detail as I can. I walk him through it step by step. This is what I've tried. And suddenly I get an epiphany, I solve the problem. This is what's known as rubber duck debugging. And this is a pretty well known technique, a lot of people use it. And there's actually a lot of research behind it um, to back it up. Essentially what's going on when you're talking to your duck is you're vocalizing your thoughts. This slows your mind down. This, this allows you to create this complex mental model of what their problem is in your head. And essentially what you're doing is you're telling yourself a story or you're telling your duck a story. And stories is how humans interpret and understand the world. So this is a really effective way of solving problems. Now let's go back to that discipline of thought notion. Um, I think that most of us would hope to aspire to reach Dijkstra's level, but that's a pretty lofty goal. So what I'd like to propose to you today is let's leverage all of the principles behind rubber duck debugging and let's apply that and use that as a framework to approach discipline of thought. So let's, let's use those techniques to help us introduce less bugs. So what I like to propose to use this. The next time you have a bug, discipline doesn't come overnight, so next time you have a bug, do rubber duck debugging. Once you're comfortable with that, shift left. Talk about what the next function you wanna, you wanna write before you write it. Get comfortable with that, find some flaws, shift next. And just talk to your duck. Let them know what you're thinking. And 
hopefully talk yourself after riding more bugs. Thank you.